Thanks for watching Film Buff, really, honestly. It's <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> Alright. Oh, hello. How's it going, guys? My name is M, Film Buff. Alright, man, so it's time for Doctor Who, uh, Series 2, Episode 4. Uh, before that, I need to thank all the amazing patrons. Thank you so much for all the amazing support. You guys are absolutely brilliant. Thank you for sticking around. Um, and I hope you're enjoying the early access. Uh, okay, so uh, let's just get right into it. The clock is broken. He's coming. Listen to me. There is a man coming to Versailles. Doctor. He's over me my whole life, and he will not desert me tonight. I need you now. You promised. The clock on the mantel is broken. It is time. Doctor! Doctor! Anyone on board? Nah, nothing here. Well, nothing dangerous. Well, it's not that dangerous. You know what? I'll just have a quick scan. In case of anything dangerous. <laughs> If you were a thing that ticked and you were hiding in Thomas' bedroom, first thing you do, break the clock. No one notices the sound of one clock ticking, but two... You might start to wonder if you're really alone. Under the bed? Don't look round. You stay exactly where you are. That is creepy. Just a nightmare, Annette. Don't worry about it. Everyone has nightmares. You monsters from under the bed have nightmares, don't you, monster? What do monsters have nightmares about? Me! The doctor. <laughs> he said not to look for it. Yeah, he did. <laughs> this is great. I'm happy Mickey gets a chance now. Just checking you're okay. Oh, she's gonna be so much older now. Cute. <clears throat> it is customary, I think, to have an imaginary friend only during one's childhood. You are to be <laughs> congratulated on your persistence. Brunette. Well. Goodness, how you've grown. Yeah. <laughs> you do not appear to have aged a single day. Strange. How could you be a stranger to me? I've known you since I was seven years old. Yeah, I suppose you have. <laughs> I came the quick route. Reason tells me you cannot be real. Oh, you never want Mr. Reason. <laughs> so many questions. So little time. <laughs> Renette Poisson? No. No, 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 no way! Renette Poisson! Later Madame of Twelve. Later still Mistress of Louis XV. Uncrowned Queen of France. Actress, artist, musician, dancer, courtesan. Fantastic gardener. I'm the doctor. <laughs> and I just snocked Madame de Pompadour. <laughs> <laughs> there could be anything on this ship. Oh, I'm loving this, man. This is great. Really alien esque. It's a great production design. Fireplace, man. You are inside my mind. Oh, dear, Annette. You've had some cowboys in here. <laughs> so, that doctor, eh? If there's anything you don't want me to see, just imagine a door and close it. I won't look. Oh, actually, there's a door just there. You might want to click. Oh, actually, several. <laughs> oh, Doctor. So lonely, so very, very alone. You mean alone? You've never been alone in your life. When did you start calling me Doctor? Such a lonely little boy. Lonely then and lonelier now. My lonely Doctor. Dance with me. I can't. Dance with me. This is the night you dance with the king. Then first I shall make him jealous. I can't. Doctor. Doctor who? <laughs> it's more than just a secret, isn't it? What did you say? That there comes a time. 
time, Lord, when every lonely little boy must learn how to dance. The doctor dances. They could it they could it this oncoming storm. I could have spread my wings and done a th have you met the French? My God, they know how to party. Oh, look at what the cat dragged in, the oncoming storm. Always take a banana to a party, Rose. Bananas are good. Oh. He'll be there when you need him. That's the way it's gotta be. It's the way it's always been. The monsters and the doctor. Seems you cannot have one without the other. Oh. Tell me about it. No, you, you can't go in there. The doctor will go back. So this is his world. Are you okay? No. I'm very afraid. But you and I both know, don't we, Rose? The doctor is worth the monsters. <laughs> And if my nightmare can return to plague me, then rest assured, so will yours. <laughs> Madame de Pompadour, you look younger every day. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Oh, this is my lover, the King of France. Yeah? Well, I'm the Lord of Time. <laughs> What's happened to them? They've stopped. They have no purpose now. So is he stuck here? For now, at least. In saving me, you trapped yourself. Did you know that would happen? Hmm, pretty much. Yet still you came. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Catch me doing that again. So here you are. My lonely angel. Stuck on the slow path for me. Yeah, the slow path. Here to the slow path. <laughs> it's not so bad. Wish me luck. No. Madame de Pompadour. Still want to see those stars? More than anything. Give me two minutes. Pack a bag. Am I going somewhere? Go to the window. Pick a star. Any star. <laughs> Oh, she's gonna be too old. And there she goes, leaving Versailles for the last time. <sighs> Illness took her in the end. She always did work too hard. What does she say? Hurt so much. <laughs> You're right. I'm always alright. Come on, Rose. It's time you show me around the rest of this place. inside your head and know that all things are possible hurry though my love my days grow shorter now and I am so very weak Godspeed my lonely angel the curse of being the doctor
That was quite incredible, that episode. Oh, all right, man. So, I believe that episode of the show is a masterpiece, a standalone masterpiece. And, uh, I'm, you know, I'm still baffled that I just watched that over the span of 45 minutes. So, just the amount of ground that was covered in uh, 45 odd minutes is just uh, quite incredible, I think. I, I feel like this is one of those episodes that can just. You know, you could pull it right out of the show, like uh, the show itself. Like you could pull it out, you could show it to anyone. Uh, you don't need any prior Doctor Who knowledge. I think I could pull this episode out and show it to anyone um, on its own. You know, I, I feel like this episode is so fantastic that it it just stands on its own, just as a fantastic story from beginning to end. And uh, Moffat. That's a name that I've noticed a few times now. I think he's delivered an unforgettable episode. Uh, again, I do think this is a bit of a masterpiece. And, I, you know, I don't mean just for Doctor Who. You know, I'm not really sure how high this episode ranks in terms of, you know, uh, fan favorites. But for me, you know, for me, this is this is probably the best episode. This is my favorite episode of the show so far. And that's quite crazy because I... It, it topped any of the Eccleston episodes for me. You know, even the Regeneration episode. Yeah, this is so good that I can firmly say this is my favorite episode of the show. This is going to take some topping, man. It's going to take another incredible episode to knock it off that spot for me. And I'm sure there's other incredible episodes in store for me. But as of this point, this is my favorite. And one of the standout performances of this episode, um, uh, Madame de Pompadour, uh, Renette. I cannot remember the last time I saw a character uh, make such an impact and be so endearing over the span of just 45 minutes. Just a, like a one-off episode, the bar has been set for a single episode character. This is, again, this is right at the top. The performance itself, I don't know the actress's name, but I'm sure I'm going to Google it right after this. Um, just, I absolutely loved everything about her. Um, yeah, man, the bar has been set high for a one-off single episode character. This is as good as it gets, man. And speaking of the Doctor, this was definitely Tennant's best performance. Out of the four or five episodes I've seen of him, this was the best. You know, this brought it all together. Because in the past episodes, I saw, like, bits and pieces um, uh, of his take on the Doctor. This really felt like it all came together. You know, this felt like a definitive depiction of his doctor. Um, because I really got to see his range in this episode. So, and you know, I, I could say that I am now becoming attached to Tenant. Um, this episode, man, you know, again, I, I spoke of his range in this episode. And I, I got, you know, I saw him go through it. Uh, all kinds of emotions. And yeah, man, I have to say it was so bittersweet. Because... Uh, she would have made a brilliant companion, right? She would have made a fantastic companion to the Doctor. You know, she was most impressive. And the Doctor thought so as well. And, and for a second, I thought she is going to be uh, in another episode. You know, that she's going to take off um, and have another episode and then, you know, come back or something. And, you know, both of them were so excited about this. He told her, I'll be right back, go pick a star. <sighs> Instead, I got that heartbreaking ending, man. You know, for him, it was like a minute or two, right? At most. Um, but for her, it was years. She, you know, at first, as he came back in and I saw the dim lighting, I I just thought, oh no, she's just going to be too old to travel now. And I thought maybe there's going to be this like goodbye, bittersweet moment that he's going to go and see her for one last time. Uh, much like Cooper and uh, Murph in at the end of Interstellar. But as he goes outside and the, the dim lighting, uh, it became really clear that she passed on. Um, and that hurt so much, man. That hurt so much. Um, the moment it hit me that, oh, she's passed on, that was just as sad as the regeneration, Eccleston's regeneration. And I didn't think that was going to be possible uh, anytime soon, but it hit me hard, man. Um because over the span of 45 minutes, I became so attached to this character, you know, and that is indicative of some brilliant writing, I'd say, that that I was able to be so attached to a character over the span of 45 minutes. 
I you know I think I I was teary eyed for the for the last seven or eight minutes of that episode, and not just her, uh, that connection you know that to see the doctor have that kind of connection, just to see how excited he was to connect, and you know he he came rushing back, and seeing the doctor's reaction, man, um, it made it even more emotional for me, cause to see him sad is it's difficult, man. Um, and, and, you know, again, fantastic acting by Tennant because, yeah, man, I felt that you could feel how crushed he was and how sad he was to see, you know, to come back all exciting and then find out that she's passed on. It's difficult, man. It hurt. He strolls back into the TARDIS and, and you know, Rose and Mickey could see that something was off. They could tell something's not right. And Rose made sure to ask him if everything's all right, if he's all right. And his res- and you know his response, again, a sad thing, man. You know, I'm always all right. Um, uh, and I think it's sad because I believe it. It's implying that this isn't the first time um, he's faced loss like this. You know, and he's gone through these emotions. I feel like it's a bit of an ironic thing. Um, that he says that because, uh, you know, he knows he's he's hurting right now. But on the outside, he keeps up this facade of, hey, look, I'm the doctor. I'm always all right. You know, perhaps playing on other people's expectations of him and other people's perception of him. That the doctor, you know, he's he's all right. He doesn't get rattled by things. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But, you know, I feel like even that moment of him saying I'm all right, always all right, is sad. And he got a chance to open up the letter. Um, and I believe she said, hurry up though, my love. Uh, my, sh- my days grow shorter. Uh, as he turns off the, the, uh, the monitor and the fireplace. Uh, you know, just that look on his face, man. It's, it's, uh, you know, this is, this is a thing that's been ongoing since uh, Eccleston. And, you know, it's, for me, it's really difficult to see the doctor in, uh, in that state. You know, especially because both these actors are so great at, sh- you know, uh, showing emotion um, and making it believable. There's like this pull-out shot of the Doctor just in the TARDIS, you know, uh, just lonely, um, heartbroken, crushed, just just by himself. And I, I felt like that personifies his existence, you know, his tragic existence, the lonely angel as Madame de Pompadour called him. So the last episode, it showed me what it means to be the Doctor's companion and to have loved the Doctor and to lose him, you know, um, through uh, Sarah Jane. And now on the flip side, in this episode, I get to see the Doctor go through those emotions. It's heartbreaking, especially because she didn't even die of old age, right? She just kind of passed on much, much too soon. You know, and this is the kind of thing the Doctor is trying to explain to Rose in the last episode. Um, And yeah, I do think that this, this was a love story. Right. Um, I do, you know, I do think the doctor fell for her. Um, he, he thought she's most impressive um, and he did fall for her. And so did she. She was actually really upfront about it. She has quite the attachment to him because, uh, you know, he mentioned, oh, I'm, you know, you don't want your mother to see a stranger. You know, and, and she quickly tells him, you know, you're not a stranger. I've known you my entire life. For her, it's years of this attachment that's been built up, um, you know, because he drops in at key points in her life. So, so yeah, man, she. I think this is definitely a love story. And the fact that he fell for her is uh, a pretty big deal because since I've started the show, um, they haven't shown me anything like this. You know, for him to fall for someone this, this hard. Um, and again, you know, took someone exceptional, someone most impressive, you know, someone who is... Uh, quite astonishing in their own right. So let's jump to the beginning of the episode. Um, you guys know I love a period piece. Um, so right from the beginning, it was quite exciting because it was clear that it's going to be a period piece. Part futuristic sci-fi and part period piece. So I thought that was a perfect fusion, actually, uh, of the two. But yeah, once again, the production design, the costume design, you know, all those things shine. So both for the abandoned um, space station and uh, France in the past. I thought it was uh, quite fantastic. I noticed the the space station had um, 
like the original alien feel to it. And going back to the past, just really authentic and believable um, set design and um, and the costume design here. Uh, you know, the different costumes uh, Madame de Pompadour had on. Um, again, you know, great stuff. Nothing, nothing about it felt cheap. Uh, one thing that was really cool to see and really nice to see was Mickey. I was happy that Mickey, you know, came along and he got a chance to experience this. And also, I think it's really good for perspective. Uh, you know, because back on Earth, he hears all these stories, right? Rose tells him about the craziest things she's done. Hearing about all that stuff is one thing, but to experience it yourself firsthand, that is a completely different thing. You know, because now he gets to see firsthand, um, you know, why Rose is so infatuated with this whole experience of, you know, traveling with the doctor. And just like the last episode, I really enjoyed Mickey's presence. Um, he is a fantastic addition, to be honest. Um, I know it's not going to last. Of course, you know, they have to go back to just uh, Rose and the Doctor, but it, it it was super cool to see Mickey Man uh, come along. Um, but I loved, I loved the, the tone and the atmosphere that was created. Uh, right back to the first time he goes into her room. But yeah, you know, I thought it was a fantastic um, establishing scene for Renette and the Doctor. But the next time he comes back, the next time he comes back, it's, uh, it's a bit different because now, you know, for him, it hasn't been long at all but for Renette it's been years so she's much older and just absolutely just drop that gorgeous like insanely stunning man I mean for me instant crush <laughs> you know honestly speaking like instant crush and uh basing it on uh the doctor's reaction you know the subtle look he has on his face as he clocks that oh okay this is Renette as he mentions oh how you've grown um, he's got this look on his face, you know, like impressed. He's really impressed. Um, so perhaps the doctor had a bit of an instant crush moment as well. Um, and speaking of uh, Renette, Madame de Pompadour is one of the most interesting, one of the most memorable, and one of the most likable characters of the show so far. She's like right up there uh, as one of my favorites. Um, you know, the impact she made in 45 minutes, I, I thought it was immense. That actress... Uh, has one of the most naturally beautiful faces I've ever seen. Um, that's just one aspect of her allure. You know, there's so much else to her. You know, she was so confident. She she was so definitive in her feelings. You know, she wanted to kiss the doctor. She took the initiative and she made the move. You know, I love that. I like that. And after the kiss, the doctor, you know, he's in a daze. Even more so once he realizes that he just kissed Madame de Pompadour. Um, and he, he finds her most impressive, like fanboy levels, right? Uncrowned queen of France, actress, uh, musician, artist. So it was clear that he, he felt that this is monumental, that he, he snogged her. You know, and one of the things that uh, I've noticed uh, since I've started the show, you know, the doctor fanboys over historical figures. You know, back in series one, he met uh, Charles Dickens. He's fanboying over him. I've seen him fanboy over the queen, right? So, but this time, you know, there's more than fanboy, you know, this time he's actually um, interested, you know, he's, he's so impressed and there's more to it than just fanboying this time. <laughs> uh, and, you know, the next time he comes back, I get to see one of the most intimate moments for the Doctor, if not the most intimate, um, since I've started the show, because he shares this telepathic connection. Um, and I guess this is the first time I get to see that he has this ability. So it seems like he's always had this ability, but uh, he said he doesn't really like to dabble too much. Um, but I feel like in that moment, in that short span, she got to know him more than anyone else in his life at the moment, even more so than Rose. Because that aspect of his life uh, has been kind of like off limits to Rose. Or he just doesn't like talking about it. He doesn't, he doesn't bring it up. You know, his childhood and his past. Um, so, you know, Renette gets to experience that. Uh, she basically gets to live it because, you know, they're inside each other's minds. So she, she experiences something even Rose has not had a chance to experience yet. So there's another layer to this connection they've built. You know, so it begins uh, on a lighthearted tone. Uh, Renette, uh, you know, continues to flirt, you know, and I love that. It's just so refreshing and it's indicative of her personality. She's this uh, impressive, strong woman who knows what she wants 
and you know she doesn't and she's not shy about it you know so i love that and you know there's this moment she kind of um he tells her that oh if you don't want me to see something close the you know just pretend you're closing a door she purposely leaves a few doors open for the doctor to see you know and she's got this you know cheeky smile on her face because i'm sure the doctor's seen something quite nice <laughs> um and you know she's just smiling about it so you know that was fun that was a fun moment but then the tables turn a bit and the doctor doesn't even realize at first that renette gets to see him uh she kind of you know goes through the door he's left open she gets to experience and see him uh, as a child lonely then lonelier now uh, i believe she called him my lonely doctor uh, but then she, she says something really interesting. She said, it's more than just a secret. Um, so something interesting going on there. And, you know, he, as she said that, he's like, what did you see? But she kind of, you know, changed the topic uh, that at some point, every little boy uh, learns how to dance. Now, once again, you know, they bring up the, the, the innuendos, you know, dancing. And uh, maybe, maybe it, it's exactly that, just dancing. Um, because, you know, later on he does come back into the the, uh, the space station. He's drunk. He's clearly had a good time. He's had a party. But again, you know, they kind of run off. And the scene kind of ends there, you know. Is it again implying that something else has gone on here? You know, so maybe the Doctor and Renek kind of got to know each other much more. <laughs> um, I thought there was this fantastic line as she's, um, as Renette is talking to Rose, the monsters and the Doctor. Seems like you cannot have one without the other. And man, so true. That is so true. You know, but interestingly, she said, the monsters are worth the doctor. You know, and she said, you and I both know this. But you know, at one point, uh, it becomes clear that uh, if the doctor goes through um, to go rescue her, if he breaks through, that it's going to get sealed off and he can't get back. But the doctor just does it regardless, right? He, in that moment, he decides that he needs to do this. You're effectively also leaving Mickey and Rose behind because um, they can't fly the TARDIS, right? Or, you know, maybe the doctor thought he'll just get back somehow. He'll figure something out. But it's a, it's a big risk he took, you know. But that also shows you, again, what kind of effect she's had on him that he, he did this. And this is grand entrance on the horse. I thought it was just fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Again, you know, just some brilliant chemistry going on. And you could tell there's some jealousy, right? Um... There's a few shots of Rose, and you know you can see that she's thinking about how the, the the doctor cares about this lady, and that he made this choice to you know, smash through and go save her, even though there might be a possibility that he can't get back. And Renette knew about this choice um, as well because she told him, "In saving me, you trapped yourself. Yet you still came." Um, and you know the funny thing here is, as she said that, the doctor's reaction. He didn't seem too upset about it. You know, he, he had this smile on his face. He's like, yeah, looks like I did. Yes, he's stuck, but he's not too upset about it. I don't think he's too upset about that. Um, but uh, this is Madame de Pompadour, you know, the amazing Madame de Pompadour. You know, she did move the original fireplace to a safer location, you know, hoping uh, that one day he'll return. It's bittersweet because she knows that, the, you know, the prospect of this slow path um, it's so exciting, you know, because this is someone she she is infatuated with, someone she adores, someone she loves. Um, so that prospect is exciting, right? But she knows she can help him, so she, you know, she chooses to help him. And at the end there, it showed me the name of this space station, and it's her name on it, Madame de Pompadour. Uh, so I suppose that kind of explains why they, uh, you know, picked her. Um, that was one of the questions, right? Why her? Uh, Rose asked the doctor, and then even the doctor kept asking, you know, you could go anywhere. Why choose to go there? But yeah, brilliant episode. I think it's a masterpiece. It's my favorite episode of the show. It's right at the top. I think it's going to take something amazing, something exceptional to, you know, knock this off the perch. Um, I enjoy that so much, man. It's a bittersweet episode. It's a heartbreaking episode. You know, the chemistry, the on-screen chemistry the doctor uh, tenant and this actress I don't know her name yet but I'm gonna find out the on-screen chemistry is just so good uh, so believable you know, and in, in the span of 45 minutes I really uh, I just wanted them to be together you know 
um and uh, that, that's the heartbreaking thing about this at the end you know she passes on and um it's a difficult thing to take but yeah man i enjoyed that so much that was honestly like a 10 out of 10 episode for me okay so if you enjoyed it please smash that thumbs up leave your comments let me know what you guys thought if you're into social media check me out the links are in the description twitter instagram um a huge shout out to all the amazing patrons thank you for sticking around uh you guys are brilliant and i hope you're enjoying the early access stuff um from now on i'm thinking of doing um uh early access plus the extended uh reactions if you know, if after the initial um, you know edit, the cut down, if the footage is around fifteen minutes plus, I'll probably do the extended reactions. If if it's like thirteen minutes, twelve minutes, then I'll just you know cut it down to ten. Like this one, uh, I'm I'm sure I'm gonna have a lot of footage, a lot of reactions. So I'll I'll put up a extended reaction on Patreon. This was exceptional. This was amazing. Best episode of the show so far for me. It's it's my favorite. Um, but yeah, man, I'm just excited. I'm just really excited. This episode really, really got me attached to Tenant. So I'm so excited right now to keep going and check out Tenant's episodes. Um, and I'm happy that it's not just one season. But yeah, man, I'm going to keep going. Uh, thanks for checking this out. Take it easy.